And we're continuing working on Yolva, who sadly has not remained with the party due to a in-game character death. However, we're still painting for the player, the figure of Yolva. Now we've got just the hair and the gold bits to do. And I am going to stay consistent and do non-metallic metal on the gold. And because the inspiration for Yolva was Viking-esque, I'm going to do blonde hair. I thought really hard about doing red hair because it would really contrast with the blue, but the blonde is what we're gonna go with because the inspiration photo also had blonde hair. So just applying down some paint, of course speeding up when we're painting. This is just an amber gold that's been slightly mixed with an earth brown, just for a good warm yellow. And it's pretty thin so that it can get into all the cracks and crevices. This Julie Guthrie, or Guthrie, excuse me, sculpture has that 80s hair, so a lot of character sculpted into the hair. And it really looks dynamic, but I have to say it is very difficult to paint. So very thin paint so you can get into all the cracks and crevices and get that base coat on. And then we'll go back through and highlight, starting with just amber gold. So this gives us a shadow base, works really well with the hair. And also good to add in if you're doing the Reaper triad colors, the blonde colors work great with this as a base. And this will also be the base color of the gold. One of the challenges when you're doing something like non-metallic metal gold and blonde hair, because they're both yellow tinted, you wanna make sure to have some type of differentiation. So for the gold, we're actually going to wash with a muddy brown just to help distinguish the variance from the hair to the gold. But Yolva, who in previous videos we've explained has not survived an encounter in the dunes. The player will still receive the miniature, uh, but this player is also a miniature painter so they've already painted and have their uh, miniature replacement of Ulrich the Goblin. And since we've started this video series of painting and adventuring party, we have had some alterations to the party makeup. And we have had a couple of party members have to leave and gained a couple of new party members. Now I have painted miniatures for them, but not as a part of this video series. And so they will be included in the montage that we'll have following this video. However, we're not going to show their painting along the way, just for timing reasons more than anything else. If I were to do the videos of painting them as well. This video series would just continue to go on and on and on. And while I really enjoyed it and have enjoyed doing this adventuring party um, series, I'm ready to change it up a little bit and have our Sunday mini painting videos change up a bit. So this will be the last painting video for the miniatures in the adventuring party for the Last Light campaign. And after the montage video, following this video next week, we will start a new video series on miniature painting. And I hope if you've enjoyed these videos that you'll enjoy those ones as well. Now you can see the headband here. I thought about doing that a different color, but I'm also going to do that with the gold. And it will be a little more challenging to see that headband because of the blonde hair, but I think it's fine. Now there, we just had to give it time to dry. So with the hair now all dried, we can start highlighting. And this is just starting with that antique gold. So very similar to the layer that was down first, just straight. 
And with hair, it's always kind of a challenge for miniature painting when you first start. I do a lot of looking at hair to look at how the light plays off of it for different styles and cuts and colors. And I found that coloring the crown and then the lower edges as well as any bits that are facing up towards the light source are what you want to highlight brighter and brighter. And this figure, like I mentioned, has that 80s Farrah faucet with lots of wave. And so there's lots of highlighting that has to go on here. And because we've got that good solid shadowed base, we can focus on the details that are raised up in the sculpture to highlight and really just let the paint come nice and easy off the brush. Keep it still thin, but not too watery so it doesn't go into all of the crevices and just paint the highlights and the very ends of the hair. And even here, just with these two colors, you can start to see a lot of volume and body to the hair. So the highlighting is a fantastic way to just, again, show the details that the sculptors of these minis put into their figures. And when they're on the table, really looks fantastic. Lots of characterization just by doing really good highlights with complementing colors so that you really call out the shadows and highlights very well. Now you'll notice with the hair, as I mentioned, a lot of the colors will be used on the sword as well, but not all of them. And again, it's to use that differentiation. We want the hair to really be a blonde color. So it'll actually get more layers of yellow highlights and the highlights will be more, uh, I guess, tonally yellow in color where the gold will keep more brown tones in it. So about every third step that we do on the hair, we skip on the sword, or rather the golden bits on the sword, as well as a pouch button and the opposite sword. Now, as we've been painting Yova, the one of the big pros for me, anyhow, is kind of picking out your color schemes. And this is true of any miniatures. If you have good ideas of your color schemes ahead of time, you're able to focus a little bit more on delivering that paint job and not having to spend time playing with different colors and different processes of laying those colors down. So Yolva is no exception. I had a good idea of the colors that I wanted to do based on the sculpture, as well as the blues, which are the player's favorite colors is blue, which you can tell by the base. And as mentioned in previous videos, we've moved that into the pants, into the tunic, the shirt, uh, even into the armor and sword by adding some blues into the various colors in the grays. And knowing that yellow complements blue really well, that really drove the decision to stick with yellow or blonde hair, as well as lots of gold bits around. So as you are painting a miniature, definitely before you start painting, when it's primed and you're checking out, make sure you get all mold lines and everything. Start thinking about your colors, what you're wanting to do. Of course, check your Pinterest boards for inspiration as well as any character sketches and doodles that you're having in place. And then prep up all your paints, break it down by what sections you're gonna paint when. Look at how you can double up your work by painting things that are away from each other so you don't have to let your paint dry. And then have fun with it. That for me is one of the biggest things when I'm painting miniatures, it's very relaxing. And I try to imagine some of the fun and experiences that the players will have with the miniatures when they're playing on the tabletop, 
or if they're commissioning a piece for display. I try to think of almost like how can it really stand out and draw attention for those display cases. And I know the challenge with this miniature here as I'm doing the blonde, it's hard to kind of differentiate with some of the green and yellow that's on there. And the gold is all very similar. But the continued layers, especially when you see it up close, just really stand out. Lots of character in the hair and onto the gold bits. You can see here with the hilt of the sword, I tried to keep a lot of that brown showing in the recesses. That's a great way to continue getting that gold to look more like gold. The transitions aren't quite as subtle as in the hair. So by skipping every couple of colors on the gold bits, you have a lot starker from that browns to the yellows. So it actually does a pretty good job of doing the non-metallic metal gold versus the blonde of the hair. And into that head wrap, Initially, I was thinking about doing something white with red there, but I changed my mind as I was prepping some of the colors and thought, nope, we're going to stick it with gold and call it a day. So no Daniel LaRusso headband for this miniature. But you can see the variance between that hilt in the sword and the hair. The hilt is a lot more brown compared to the hair. So it definitely is not on the table going to look the same. Even though the color tones and a lot of the colors are the same, you'll definitely be able to tell the variance from the hair to the gold. And just continuing highlights. This is just picking out more individual bits of hair rather than sections. The highest points on this crown are going to go up to pure white where the light is reflected. And then also on the highest points in the curls in the hair and the lowest points on the edges of the hair. Again, I found this with miniatures really makes a good difference to show how to highlight hair by making sure that we highlight the base as well. And while I did not intend to use this video series to plug, I am going to say that if you are interested in having a miniature painted, I do commissions. So leave a comment or reach out to us. We've got a lot of links in the description box down below. If you're interested in having a miniature painted, happy to take commissions as well. With Yulva here, and it's sad that she will not see the tabletop once she is done being painted along with her other party comrades. But the time that Yulva was in game was very interesting. The dynamic between her and Dave, the dwarf, was pretty fun to see at the table. When you're playing RPGs, looking for creative, fun ways to utilize the character that you've built with your companions, it's always so nice for the DM. We love seeing things like that. Making your character your own, giving them a lot of fun and interesting aspects to their personality, really helps liven the table and again for a GM's perspective it's so fun to see RP and character personalities play on each other at the table it's so much fun and as I said with this video series it's kind of sad to come to a close as we get closer and closer to finishing Yulva here but at the same time, I'm looking forward to the next video series. If you have anything that you would like to 
see us cover in our Sunday miniature painting, be sure to leave a comment or send us a message. Of course, email and Facebook information in the description box. Maybe there's something you'd like us to cover with different techniques or styles of paint or how to set up a wet palette, whatever ideas you would like us to explore a little bit more in detail, be sure to leave comments. Reminder that next week we're going to have a montage of the adventuring party for The Last Light. Be sure to check that out. It's not going to be us painting, just showing the finished miniatures together. So a lot of fun. We did one about halfway through that I thought came out really nice. Seeing them while we were still in lockdown, having to play remotely, but getting them on a battle map nonetheless was a lot of fun. So the montage for this group is going to be really exciting. It's not going to be as dry as watching paint dry, I promise. It's going to have some music and it's going to be upbeat and give a few highlights on the miniatures as well as the characters. So should be a lot of fun. Make sure you check it out. Here we're just working on finalizing some of the brightest details of the non-metallic metal. The hair kind of follow suit again about every third step of the hair we skipped but Yolva blonde hair I know it's hard to see against the green but we are just about complete final highlights here I hope you can see that volume and body the shadows and the highlights that hair really standing out with the brightest highlights going on. Again, you want to make sure that you really take into account where you want your light source. Make sure it's consistent throughout the miniature. The only time I break this is with the hair. I do the very bottom bits of hair. And again, that for me is just a good way to separate it from the armor. And the final bright white highlights will go on the bits of gold that are also going to be directly in the light. So just like the hair, wherever that light source is coming from, for us, it's a hero mini, so it's directly above. And then with that, we have completed Yolva, the Nordic inspired miniature. So Yolva now needs to go through and get basing and we're done. And we'll see you next week for the montage.